Today we're going to add a feature to Unity that I wish was built in. You can see in my hierarchy that there are some unusual icons to the right of some of these game objects. Now this is a little feature that we can add in about 10 minutes that will quickly let you know at a glance if there's a problem with one of the components on that game object. We're going to do this by creating a custom attribute and hooking into one of the events in the hierarchy window. Because this tool works with attributes, you'll be able to integrate this with many other systems from the asset store or things that you've built. Let's get started. Well, let's start by taking a look at some of the classes I've set up for an example. Here I've got references to classes called dependency, which inherit from mono behavior, a standalone reference, and a list that I've initialized with a capacity of two. Now I've also got a reset method here to clear out the list, that was just for my own testing. The dependency class itself is nothing special, it's basically just a marker. And then we have one more thing. In the example class, you may have noticed I was using a new attribute, required field. Required field is also going to be an empty class, but we might as well annotate it with its own attribute so that we mark it as being for fields only. And with those three things out of the way, we can start writing some code, starting with a property drawer. Now this first editor class we're going to use for showing icons and messages inside of the inspector. Because it's going to inherit from property drawer, let's also give it the attribute custom property drawer with a type of required field attribute. I've already created a little PNG icon I can use, and we can store it here as a texture 2D. So let's override the on GUI method so we can customize how the property is drawn in the inspector. We can use begin property to start drawing, then we'll start checking for changes to the property value. Next, let's define a rect area for the property field, and we'll leave a little bit of space for the icon with minus 20. Then we'll draw the property field with the default field drawer. Then we can check if the field is unassigned, so null or empty. And then we can display the required icon if that's the case. Let's make a little helper method that'll figure that out. So we'll call it is field unassigned and we'll pass in the serialized property. We can just have a switch statement here on property type. So for object references, we'll check to see if the value is not null. Or maybe we've got a string. We could check to see if the string is not null or empty. And if either of those is true, we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll default to return true. Now, you could make this a lot more comprehensive if you started adding more types, like, for example, exposed reference. Or maybe you want to handle, for example, an animation curve. Here, you could check to see if the animation curve has a value where the length is greater than zero. Of course, there's lots of other serialized property types you can use, including support for all kinds of primitives. So you can set this up however you like. Let's come back up to our main method here. We can say, if the field is unassigned, then we want to take some action. First, let's define the rect area for the icon, and we'll align it to the right side of the field. Then we'll draw the icon with a tooltip that explains what the issue is. And we can come out of there and we can say, if there's any changes that were made to the property, we're going to apply the modified properties so they're saved. We'll mark the target object as dirty so that Unity knows to save the changes. Then we'll come out of there and we'll end drawing the property. Now let's come out of here and I'm actually going to jump back to the example. And just for now, I'm going to add at least one more type in there for testing. So I think here I'll just add a string and I'll make sure that it's marked as a required field and exposed to Unity. And that should be enough for a good test to start with. So after reloading, you can see all my empty fields that I marked with the required field attribute now have this bright red icon beside them. So I'll remove my little test here. If I hover over the icon as well, we can see that it will give me a tooltip with some kind of meaningful message. If I start dragging in dependencies here, the icons will go away. And of course, if I start typing something in the string field, the icon will also disappear there. So in the inspector here, that's working as expected. But so far, this isn't really different than any other kind of validator tool you would have. What I really want to do is see icons in the hierarchy beside game objects where there's a problem. Let's write a little bit more code. First of all, if we come back into our existing property drawer, here where we were using the set dirty method, let's also force a repaint of the hierarchy. This way, anytime a change is detected in a property that we've marked as required, we'll force a repaint over in the hierarchy and it can show any sort of messages or warnings that we want. So let's make a new class to handle that. So we're going to use a little bit of link and a little bit of reflection. I'm going to collapse up these dependencies and I'm going to mark this static class as initialize on load. The reason being we're going to hook into some editor events. But first, let's stash a reference to the icon, the same one I was using before, so that we can also show it in the hierarchy. Notice as well that I'm not inheriting from property drawer here. This is just a static class. I've called it hierarchy icon drawer, but it's just for drawing icons in the hierarchy. 
it's not an extension of any editor class. So because we're going to be doing some lookups with reflection, what I'd like to do is cache all that information. Let's have a static read-only dictionary here that's keyed by type and stores field info. The reason that I use the initialize on load attribute is because here in the constructor, I want to subscribe to the hierarchy window item GUI event. With this, we can hook into our own method and it'll be called for each item in the hierarchy to draw our custom GUI elements. But before we dig into this method, I'm going to make two helpers. The first one is going to check if the provided field value is unassigned, meaning null or empty. Now, we don't have a serialized property here, so we have to do something a little bit different. First of all, we can say if it's equal to null, we'll just return true. Otherwise, we can check to see if the field is a string and if it's null or empty. After that, we could check to see if it's an enumerable. If it is, we can iterate over the collection to see if any item is null. If that's the case, we can also return true. Now you can add more checks for the other types, uh, depending on what kind of rules you had set up. Probably want to keep it in line with the uh, actual property drawer for the inspector. If we get all the way through this, then we can return false, meaning that there is actually a value in the field. Or let's say there's an acceptable value in the field. Okay, we're good on this helper method. I want to make another one that will retrieve and cache the fields with the required attribute for a given component type. Let's come back up under our callback method. We'll add one new method there. This method can take in a type and it will return us an array of field info. First, let's check if the fields are already cached for this component type. If not, we're going to get all the instance fields, public and non-public, of the component type. Now we'll figure out which ones are required fields and we'll store them in their own list. To do this, let's iterate over all the fields that we found. First, let's figure out if it's either public or a serialized field. And the other requirement is that it must have the required field attribute. And we could say if both of those conditions are true, we're going to add it to our required fields list. When we get out of here, we'll convert that list to an array and we'll cache it for future use. At the end of this method, let's return the required fields array. OK, almost done. We just have to finish up our delegate. Inside of the callback, let's use the instance ID that gets passed in to get the game object associated with that instance ID. If it's not a game object, we'll bail out. Otherwise, we have a reference to the game object, so we can iterate over all of its components. If a component comes back as null, just continue. But otherwise, let's use the helper we made to get any of its public or serialized fields that were marked as required. If there aren't any, let's just continue. Otherwise, let's check to see if any of the required fields are unassigned. And for that, we can use our other helper method. If we find one, we're going to define the rect area where we're going to draw the icon in the hierarchy. I'm going to put mine over to the right side a little bit, but you could put it on the left too if you wanted. Then we'll draw the icon again with a tooltip explaining the issue. And we can break because we don't need to check anything else. We know there's a problem on this game object. We only have to show that there's a problem one time. Now, why don't we jump back into Unity and see what this looks like? OK, well, we can actually already see it because I left one of the fields empty in the inspector there. So you can see now in the inspector and in the hierarchy, I've got my red icon. And if I drag a dependency in there, of course, it goes away in both places. If I clear out the string, you can see it shows up again. If I hover over top, we get a little tooltip. So this is doing exactly what I want. And I can add more support for other types if I want, or totally different rules if I wanted to show an info icon or anything else that I really wanted to. Now, some of you can tell by looking at the screen here that I've installed several Odin tools from Serenex. I want to show you just before we wrap up how you can integrate these hierarchy icons so that when Odin is giving you a warning in the inspector, you can also get an alert in the hierarchy. I'm sure some of you can guess just how easy this is. All we really have to do is come down here to where I was specifying the required field attribute. I'm going to change it to be Odin's required attribute, and I'm going to import the dependency here. With that done, we can jump back over to the example code. Here, I'm just going to do a find and replace everywhere I had required field. I'm just going to change it to be required. And again, we'll import the dependency here on Odin Inspector. That's all we have to do. And in fact, you could do that with any attribute. Now check it out. Not only do I get the Odin warning in the inspector, the Odin validator also shows there's an error, and I've got the icon in the hierarchy. 
I'll just wipe everything out here quickly with a reset and then we can start adding fields in again because I just want to make sure that the icon goes away, all our Odin warnings go away, and the validator checks green when everything's fine. So if I start dragging in dependencies here again, it should just fall off in the inspector, add some text here, and yeah, once again, no more alerts, and the check mark in the scene view is green. I'll just say one more thing before we wrap it up. If you wanted to check all the children of a child, back where we were just checking all the components on the game object in the hierarchy, Instead, check all the components of children. Get all components in children. That should fix that up for you if that's something that you want. I'll leave this code up in a gist if you want to take this and make it your own. Don't forget to join us on Discord. Like and subscribe. There's a new video every Sunday. I'll put a link to some related content up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.